guys, Clem from Clem's Recipe Reviews, and today I'm going to make be making a cob loaf uh, spinach dip. So, you know, New Year's Eve is coming up, you know, you probably have got a, quite a few barbecues to go to, and here in Australia, I've noticed that one of the big traditional uh, items to bring to um, a barbecue that you're going to or anything like that, other than a box of chocolates, is a cob loaf. So now a cob loaf is this piece of bread here. So just, it's a giant round loaf pretty much, but you cut out the middle and you put in a dip. Um, these are so, I guess, popular uh, around here that it's, um, there's a town that actually does a festival of cob loaf and they do a competition every year. This is even a huge segment on uh, Triple J, a youth radio station this year because one of the radio presenters, his mom does this really good cob loaf, supposedly. Anyway, so this, I guess you could say it's almost like one of those traditional 70s party dishes that never actually really went out of style and now it's actually becoming a lot more popular as well, you know, because you know, things after about 30 years and stuff come back uh, in style, I guess, you know, so. Uh, you can do it uh, cold, you can do it warm, I've even seen dessert ones as well. But this one that I'm going to do is the traditional spinach dip. So the recipe I have found is from taste.com.au, that's one of the most popular food websites uh, in Australia. What it has in it is cream cheese, sour cream, French onion soup mix, and frozen spinach, and I think maybe some seasoning. I'm gonna try it out. Of course, I'm gonna do it twice, like I usually do with any recipes that I'm testing out, and then I'll let you know what the verdict is. So, here we go. The traditional spinach and recipe is to cut four centimeters off the top. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, cob loaves are round. You're not going to make an exact measurement of four centimeters off the top. And then it says also to take out the, the white stuff, you know, the white inside of the bread um, and leaving only a one and a half centimeter layer of bread, which I'm sorry, but that's probably a little bit impossible to do and that those type of instructions are a little too exact. So I'm gonna tell you now, I'm probably gonna cut off, just just make a nice lid. So, you know, for this one, you know, make it maybe about four or five inches. Just take the, the top off, scoop out the inside, but leave enough that, you know, you've got a really nice layer of the crust as well as a little bit of the white stuff. Like, let's not get too exact in our measurements here at taste.com.au. Alrighty, so 250 grams of spinach, like the recipe, um, I've squeezed the hell out of it, so that way there's not that much water in it. Uh, sour cream and cream cheese plus French onion soup mix. So let's go ahead and get mixing. I'm just gonna scrape it along the sides and mix it up again. So I want everything to be nicely mixed. The next step is to pour it in to the cob loaf, cover it with the lid, and put it in a 180 degree Celsius oven, which um, I'm not really sure what it is in Fahrenheit, but I will put it in the show notes for you. And bake it for about 20 minutes until golden brown. I'm a little bit skeptical about this step, but we'll see how we go. Alright, I'm just going to measure the top just to make sure that I did definitely cut four centimeters because, quite frankly, there's not a whole lot of dip and I'll show it to you. So if that's the top, again, 
you really can't measure it. So, yeah. I've cut exactly four centimeters, at least from the way that I measure it. But how are you supposed to exactly measure it on a round loaf? And this is how much dip. So there's about four, two, two and a half, maybe even three inches or, you know, four, between four and six centimeters of space between the dip and the, the top. Which to me, I would say is, you could easily just double this recipe to fill it to the top. And I would think that if you're taking it so far, do you want it filled to the top? So I'm gonna pop this into the oven anyway. We obviously have to do a second test and then I'll show you what improvements you can do to this recipe. So let's pop this in the oven. It says for 20 minutes, again on 180 degrees, and then we'll try it out. Okay, so nice golden brown little bits. Well, kind of all stuck together a little bit, but not that bad. Let's just see how the top, what it looks like inside. Looks the same. The uh, top's um, pretty hot, but why don't we go ahead and try this out? All right, so let's give this a try. Um, I've let it sit for a little bit just to cool down because obviously I don't want to burn my mouth or anything like that. But yeah, so it's a really creamy texture already, um, as it is, as you can see. And nice little bits and specks of the spinach and stuff. Now, I dove my bread in pretty deep. The top is really warm. The bottom is at about room temperature. Um, maybe this dip, I don't know, is really if it's really meant to be warm, like the instructions say, I would almost think it probably should be cold, especially if you're gonna serve it in the middle of summer, um, like it is here in Australia at the moment. Also, the other thing, all I can taste is French onion soup mix. Like, the, the spinach in general anyway, like when it's frozen and it's mixed in like this, is pretty warm, or not warm, sorry, but pretty mild in taste. Um, so this one, I probably wouldn't put as much French, French onion soup mix. I maybe might even try it without it, but we'll see how the second test goes, um, and we'll go from there. Uh, the other thing, the, the bread did crisp up pretty nicely, but like I said before, before we put this in the oven, there's not a whole lot of dip com in, by comparison to bread. But if you did just this amount, you would only just need the bread. You wouldn't need any crackers or veggies or anything. It's okay. I don't think it's the best crop of the dry. But we're going to do a second test, and then we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I've done the spinach dip cob uh, twice now, and it came out the exact same way the second time, So, which is why I haven't bothered to actually show you the, the filming of it or anything like that. Just, just be really redundant. So what I gleaned from these two tests is um, that one, it was really salty. So uh, it was... You actually kind of got thirsty after a little while, um, after trying to, to eat through it. And two, all it tasted like was French onion soup mix. So I actually had a look on the back of the label, and salt is the third most abundant ingredient. So if you look on the back label of your of the ingredients on a food packet, they go in order of uh, which, which ingredient there is most of in that particular product. So this one was... Um, it was one ingredient, then potato starch, which I guess is to give it some sort of creaminess, and then salt. I also went to the grocery store and had a look, and every single French onion soup packet, even the salt-reduced ones, salt was either the third or fourth you know, most abundant ingredient. So, for me, I've concluded that probably French onion soup mix is probably not a great idea, especially if you want to keep your salt to a minimum. At the same time, if you're doing this as an outdoor barbecue, you want to maybe have a little bit of a fresh taste going um, with the spinach dip, which is why I'm going to actually eliminate it completely from my recipe or the improvement of this recipe. 
you're more than welcome to use it, of course, you know. I mean, if you like French onion soup mix and you like the taste of this cob, go ahead, use it, have fun with it, enjoy it. But for me, it's just, it's just a little too overpowering. If it's a spinach dip, you should be able to taste the spinach in there. So what I'm actually going to use instead is garlic powder and onion powder, as well as some fresh herbs, a little bit of fresh parsley, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it, exact same method. So um, the cream cheese, the sour cream are gonna stay the same, and the spinach. Um, of course, that, cons that amount is gonna stay the same, but again, garlic powder and onion powder. All right, so again, like I said, um, I'm going to still use the same amount of cream cheese, the same amount of sour cream, and of course, the same amount of spinach because they're all in the right convenient sizes for the containers and any, everything. Um, but I'm going to add garlic powder and onion powder. Now that's just to give it a little bit more flavor and keep it from getting too bland. I'm assuming that's what the purpose of the onion soup mix was for. So I kind of prefer my, uh, I prefer garlic over uh, the onion powder. So I'm just actually gonna add uh, one teaspoon, so this is a half teaspoon here, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and then I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of onion powder, and we'll go from there. What I'm also going to do is actually season it. So I am gonna put salt and pepper in there, just that way to give it you know, a little bit of seasoning, which is why I think maybe also with the French onion soup makes it taste really salty, because it did. the recipe did say season to taste, and it was just too salty after adding a tiny amount of salt. So, you know, I mean, like I said before, there was a lot of salt in the onion soup mix. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's probably why the, um, it just got way too salty. But at the same time, you know, if you like that kind of stuff, then, you know, by all means, go ahead and use it. The other thing I'm going to add is about a quarter cup of chopped parsley. You could probably use any, uh, any fresh herbs that you've got on hand. Thyme would probably be really good in this. Even maybe a little bit of dill, you know, make a little bit of a ranch uh, herb seasoning if you want to go with that. Um, and then again, yeah, salt and pepper. So I'm just going to put in, I'd probably say maybe a quarter, a half a teaspoon of ground pepper to a teaspoon of ground pepper, depending on your taste, and probably a quarter teaspoon of salt, not even that. Like, I, I wouldn't say put too much in there. Let's go ahead and get mixing. Just mix it all up um, and it tastes still a little a tiny bit bland. So I've actually added another teaspoon of garlic powder, another half teaspoon of onion powder. I'm also going to add probably about a taste, tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Again, I don't want like one thing to overpower the other. I still want that spinach taste and I still want that creaminess to, to come out as well. That actually tastes really good. So, yeah, I think maybe what the added ingredients are, and then two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, about a quarter of a cup of chopped herbs, whatever you want, and also a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. That way, it actually keeps everything from overpowering but you still get a lot of flavor you get a little bit of that spinach in there and it's actually it actually is not bad you could even probably serve this cold i reckon this actually would taste good cold i'm not a huge fan of warm dips which maybe that's why this recipe was a little bit of a turn off for me but i'm still gonna go ahead and try and put it in the oven for about 20 minutes like the, the original recipe says and we can go from there all right so i've cut the cob and i have put the dip that I've created into, into it. I've also actually had this in the fridge, the, the dip itself, for about like two hours and it's still really creamy. Like, see, it's like, you could seriously use this as a cold dip. 
um, which I would be all for. Uh, this this dip sounds really good, really cold. But as the recipe says, you got to put it in for 20 minutes um, into a 180 degree oven. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven, and then we'll test it out. All right, so Cobb's out of the oven. The crust is still nice and fluffy on the inside. Let's just go ahead and have a try. That is heaps better than tasting onion dip all the way through. So, I'll put the recipe on the show notes. Go ahead and have a try. Try both of them, the original as well as the improved one. But, other than that, you can find them on clemsrecipereviews.com. I'll see you for the next episode.